Hi there, um, so my name's Isabella and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about sonnets. So sonnets are short poems of 14 lines and there are two main types of sonnets. There's the Shakespearean sonnet and the Petrarchan sonnet. Today I'm mainly going to be talking about Shakespearean sonnets but maybe after this lesson you might want to go away and have a research about the Petrarchan sonnet. So sonnets are typically romantic or love-based um, with the content normally being admiring someone or setting up a way in which their love is going to be discussed in some way. Um, and the origin of the sonnet dates back to the 15th or 16th century with Italian Renaissance poets. And so the word sonnet actually comes from the Italian sonetto, which means little song. Um, today I'm going to be analysing one Shakespearean sonnet and really focusing on the Shakespearean sonnet as the form. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about Shakespearean sonnets. Um, so William Shakespeare wrote 154 sonnets, which were published together in 1609, but he also wrote further sonnets in some of his plays, for example, in Romeo and Juliet or in Henry V. Um, so you might want to go and have a research of some of those plays as well at some point and see if you can spot the sonnets. A Shakespearean sonnet has a relatively strict rhyme scheme, so I'll go on to talk about that in just a minute in more detail. And it has a relatively strict form as well, um, and this can um, is made up of three quatrains, and each quatrain is four lines. So there are three chunks of four lines, which make up to 12 lines, and then there's one rhyming couplet in the end, which is an extra two lines, which brings the whole sonnet to 14 lines in total. Um, now the metre of a sonnet, or a Shakespearean sonnet in particular, is iambic pentameter. Now the word pentameter means pent, like a pentagon, five. There are five pairs of an iamb, and an iamb is a couple of syllables where the first is unstressed and the second is stressed. So I've written this out phonetically here as di da di da di da di da di da. Now that might not make a lot of sense right now, but just in a second when I go on and use an example, hopefully that will make a little bit more sense when I show an example in context. Now another um, feature of a Shakespearean sonnet is a volta um, between lines 12 and 13. So a volta is a sort of change in viewpoint or um, some kind of consolidation or conclusion to the poem as a whole. Again, I'll show an example of this in just a minute, um, but it's a feature of a Shakespearean sonnet that this happens at the end of the three quatrains and just before the final rhyming couplet. So, let's dive right in with an example. Here I've got Sonnet 18 by William Shakespeare, probably one of his most famous sonnets, um, the first line being, Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? So I'm just going to go back through this poem and pick out some of the features that I was just talking about. So first of all, I'll start off with the strict rhyme scheme that I was talking about. Um, so if every line is given a letter name, um, so the first line I'll call A, and then every matching line with the same rhyme at the end will have the same letter. So you can see on line three, May rhymes with line one, day, and so line three will also be marked with an A. So I'm going to do the same thing, and line two, ending in temperate, will be named B, because that's a new rhyme sound, and so line four, ending in date, so a half rhyme with temperate, I'll also label B. So you can see immediately the first quatrain, or chunk of four lines, we've got A, B, A, B for the rhyme scheme. Um, so this sonnet continues in the same way, and we'll call this line C, and the next one D, and then back to C again, and then D. So you can see here, C shines rhymes with declines, and dimmed rhymes with untrimmed, and that's the second quatrain. The third quatrain continues in the same way, so we'll go E for fade, which rhymes with the E of shade, and we'll go F for oast, the contraction there, and we'll rhyme that with the F for grossed. So that's the end of the third quatrain, the third chunk of four lines, 
And now we've just got the final rhyming couplet, which will label G, G, as they just rhyme with each other, C and the. Great, so I hope that makes a little bit more sense now with the rhyming scheme. We've got A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. Um, now I am just going to mark in the quatrain so you can see the structure and the format a bit easier. So at the end of here, we've got the first quatrain and I'll label that one. At the end of here, our second quatrain, so I'll just label that with a two. Um, at the end here, that's the third quatrain, three. And then at the end here, that's the end of the rhyming couplet. So I'll just do R, C, there we go. So I hope you can see the structure there of the first four lines, the second four lines, the third four lines, and the rhyming couplet. So another thing that I discussed was the meter of a sonnet and the iambic pentameter in particular. So I'm just going to go through now and explain that a little bit more, the di da di da di da di da di da So you can mark unstressed syllables with a little u like this, and stressed syllables with the diagonal line like this. So that's shall I, and I'm going to just continue with this first line here, compare, the being unstressed, to being stressed, a, uh, sa, Ms, day. So hopefully um, those symbols will make sense to you. It's just the couple here. Shall I compare the two a sa mus day? And I said before the iambic pentameter means there are five couples of syllables. So if I just put a line in between each couple, then it'll be clear there where each pair ends and the next begins. And I said it can be split between words or single words themselves. We've got shall I compare the two, a sum, and then the second half of the word, mus day. So maybe after this lesson, you might want to continue through the entire poem and mark every word, every line like this with the unstressed and stressed syllables to really pick out that iambic pentameter. Now, one more thing that I mentioned was the volta, the change of um, opinion or viewpoint in between the 12 12th and 13th line. So this is happening here just before the um, rhyming couplet and you can see in the first line Shakespeare sets up the task of shall I compare thee to a summer's day and goes on for the next um, 11 lines to discuss how this person being um, admired compares or doesn't compare to a summer's day. And in the final two lines the first word so here um, depicts how there is like a conclusion coming with so long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this and this gives life to thee. And um, there you go, it, it um, concludes the task that was set up of comparing the loved one to a summer's day and ends with the conclusion there. So I hope that makes sense now with the rhyme scheme, the format and the meter, as well as the feature of the volta in this example of a Shakespearean sonnet. So I'll just do a really brief overview now to sum up what we've learnt today. Um, a sonnet is a poem of 14 lines, which means they're easy to spot. So you might want to read a little anthology of poetry, or if you do read a Shakespearean play, you can look out for the 14 lines and it means they're easy to spot as sonnets. A Shakespearean sonnet has a strict form, metre and rhyme scheme, which I picked out for you in the example given on the last slide and a sonnet often sets up a problem to be solved or considered, or it might not be a problem, just a, a topic for the poem um, and the poet to go on and discuss. And it's also worth mentioning that although sonnets are a very old form of poetry, as I said, dating back to the 15th century, modern day poets do still use the format today. And in fact, the um, previous poet laureate, Caroline Duffy, um, in hour, which might be worth going and researching afterwards, uses the same format, um, but it is a less kind of strict form, meter and rhyme scheme, and it just mainly sticks to the 14 line length. So yeah, you might want to go and think about some of these tasks that I mentioned today, um, but I hope my lesson has clarified what a sonnet is, and in particular, a Shakespearean sonnet. Thanks for listening, and have a great day.